Hello everybody and welcome to History Slash Law Bite number 169, dated February 1st, 2021. I'm Walter, your mobile historian and blue collar scholar. This History Slash Law Bite is entitled Gaines vs. Canada, 305 U.S. 337, 1938. If you've never heard of this case before, officially uh, referenced as Missouri x rail Gaines versus Canada, was a landmark U.S. Supreme Court decision in the late 1930s that addressed the issue of segregation in higher education, specifically exclusionary segregation in higher education when schools were only provided for one race. In Gaines versus Canada, Mr. Lloyd Gaines, after finishing college, and like so many other uh, college students upon completing their education, decided to pursue law school and applied for admission to the University of Missouri School of Law. Unfortunately, the University of Missouri School of Law did not accept African Americans as students, and Mr. Gaines once he applied to the school, was immediately denied admission. In accordance, however, with the constitutional requirement to provide equal treatment, or at least their version of equal treatment, uh, as required by the Supreme Court's decision in Plessy v. Ferguson, separate but equal, and the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause in the U.S. Constitution, the state of Missouri offered to pay Gaines' tuition in another state, all right? Presumably a neighboring state that did not have racial segregation in its educational system. Now, to many, that might seem like, okay, fine. But to others, and Mr. Gaines included, that was unacceptable. Indeed, for him to accept this, he would have to pick up his life entirely and move to another state to obtain his legal education because he was an African-American. Whites didn't have to do this unless they chose to do it. Whites could easily attend school right there in Missouri, but an African-American or an Asian-American or any other minority group wouldn't have this option. Indeed, they would have to go to another state and, and obtain their legal education. The fact that Missouri was paying the bill to me and to many others being irrelevant fact. Bottom line is they had to go elsewhere. They had to relocate physically and obtain their legal education because they were non-white when whites did not have to do this. So Mr. Gaines was not going to take this lying down and initiated a lawsuit against uh, the University of Missouri or in the state itself. He uh, labeled the defendant uh, Mr. Silas Gaines, all right, who was the register, uh, registrar at the University of Missouri School of Law, all right, suing uh, the registrar throughout the state courts. Uh, they met no success, you know, and the NAACP was the motivator behind this case, essentially. And they met defeat at the circuit court uh, and at the Missouri Supreme Court, all right, which is, of course, what led to the matter being appealed to the Supreme Court of the United States, okay? With that, the justices were faced with one primary issue, and that was, did the state of Missouri violate the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause by allowing whites to attend law school within the state of Missouri, but forcing blacks to attend law school in another state, even if the state itself paid the bill, all right? And the Supreme Court, in a seven to two decision, ruled, indeed, that Missouri's action was in violation of the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause. The Supreme Court, uh, speaking through Chief Justice Charles Evans Hughes held the following points to be so. First and foremost, if the state was going to provide anyone or provide, period, a legal education to its citizens, 
all right, provide access to a legal education for its citizens, then it had to provide such access to all of its citizens, all right? It could not force certain citizens to attend school out of state while allowing other citizens to be able to attend school in state. There is nothing equal about that, all right? Nothing equal about that whatsoever. All individuals who are qualified to attend law school in the state of Missouri must be afforded the ability to attend law school in the state of Missouri, all right? And of course, the uh, decision speaks well beyond Missouri, but essentially to any state that had this practice, okay? So, it became illegal for the state itself to allow one group to attend law school in the state while requiring other groups, minority groups, to attend law school out of state. All right, that is inherently unequal, clear violation of the U.S. Constitution's 14th Amendment. All right, so therefore, with that in mind, states such as Missouri, okay, and a litany of others that only had one type of particular educational institution, such as a law school, medical school, didn't make a difference, whatnot, they only had one type of educational institution, then under the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause, they had to allow that institution to be open to all qualified applicants regardless of their race, all right? If they didn't want to do that, then they had to create an institution for those applicants that they did not want at that other institution, okay? Roughly translated, if the state only had one law school, all right, which was only open to whites, all right, and they didn't want to build a minority school, then they had to open up the white school to minorities, okay? If they didn't mind building a minority school, then they would obviously take care of that post haste, all right? But the point is, bottom line, if they only had one school, like in Missouri's case, all right, that was only open to whites, then they had to open that school to members of all races, assuming they didn't want to build a school for minorities, all right? So, bottom line, again, the states like this, like Missouri, you know, who only had one school, either had to build a school for minorities or integrate their one school. Those were the two options available to them to satisfy equal protection of the laws. Granted, it was typically a whole lot more expensive to build a whole other school than just integrate the one they had, okay? But those were the options. So this case uh, certainly left a lot of southern states in a bind, you know, to either integrate or build an additional school, all right? One is going to cost a whole lot less than the other, all right? So Gaines versus Canada uh, struck a pretty serious blow to segregation and the separate but equal doctrine uh, as held in Plessy versus Ferguson. But of course, this case did not overrule uh, Plessy versus Ferguson. That wouldn't come for another 16 years until Brown versus Board of Education, which was significantly and virtually entirely uh, upended the court's decision in Plessy versus Ferguson. All right. So, this case, however, as I mentioned, was not unanimous, and it drew two dissents from uh, Justices uh, James McReynolds and Pierce Butler. Speaking through Justice McReynolds, he held that because the state of Missouri, although it was not allowing Gaines access to attend law school in the state, because they agreed to pay for his uh, education elsewhere, they were still affording him the access to education and thus satisfying equal protection requirements. Only McReynolds, who was a vehement, vehement racist uh, and would never uh, side with an African-American plaintiff seeking equal protection of the laws, would see this as equal. And there is nothing equal about this. He totally ignores the fact that white students were not at all subject to such burdens. Only minority students. Okay? So their dissents essentially carried no weight. They were on the wrong side of history most of the time. So the conclusion of the court, once again, the decision of the court here was that 
states with only one particular type of educational institution, okay, in this case law, but it could also be extended to medicine or others, okay, if they only have one particular type of educational institution, then if they didn't want to integrate that institution, they had to build a separate school for minorities. If they didn't want to build a separate school for minorities, then they had to integrate their sole institution. So this case, like I said, dealt a serious blow to Jim Crow segregation, all right, and all the states that practiced it uh, in their educational systems. Interestingly enough, all right, uh, Mr. Gaines himself did not enjoy uh, the fruit of the court's decision. A few months after it was handed down, he mysteriously disappeared and no logical uh, trace of his whereabouts were ever to be known again, you know, uh, which led to lots of theories that he was murdered and he had skipped the country. Uh, the second theory uh, was given the most weight because several, uh, you know, unnamed individuals say they saw him walking about in Mexico City. Um, whether or not that's true, who knows, but in any case, uh, Mr. Gaines never attended the uh, University of Missouri School of Law and to uh, fulfill the requirements established by this decision, the state of Missouri established uh, Lincoln University School of Law, which was specifically for black students. That school of law existed from the time of the decision until 1955 when the Supreme Court's decision uh, in Brown versus Board of Education one year earlier uh, laid the groundwork for the dismantling of racial segregation in all areas of public life in the United States. All right, so that is Gaines versus Canada, uh, 305 uh, U.S., 337, 1938, a very important uh, civil rights case in the late 1930s. If you have any questions or controversies, leave them down below and I'll be happy to answer them. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so now. It will be greatly appreciated. Take care, stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you at the next bite. Peace.